neither the problem is that the Lagrange in the Lagrangian if you start gauge fixing you lose equations of motion for example if you substitute a0 equal to 0 so there is no a0 in the Lagrangian you lose the Gauss law okay so it is necessary to have that a0 in the Lagrangian to get the Gauss law but when you go to the Hamiltonian formulation it starts telling conditions on the initial data okay or even the Lagrangian formulation it so if you just look at equations of motion you can uh, recover the constraints directly constra constraints on the initial data directly okay. so the redundant variables are not so redundant in the variational method okay so you cannot say primary or first gauge you cannot say like that Gauge property huh. is not very fundamental. That is problematic. Dirac in his book, in this, he gave a set of lectures in Yeshiva, I think, okay, where he analyzed this constraint dynamics first. Okay. And there he says that, uh, for example, diffuse constraints, any theory can be unparameter, well, he does not use it. You can always introduce. In, at the level of the action, new variables and make it completely gauge uh, diffeomorphism invariant. Okay, okay. So that is the kind of thing you are talking about. So, but okay. then it loses the any fundamental meaning. Uh, there is something which I am missing. But I mean, if you do the gauge analysis on those systems, then generally speaking, they get eliminated. There is nothing much more happens. But in other cases where you get twisted bundles and so on like the words I am considering you cannot do that okay or in gravity there are conditions at infinity then you cannot do this okay I mean so I think there are trivial cases and non-trivial cases I would say which one Proca, Proca. no uh, no no because that gives you a condition on when you vary a0 okay which tells Huh? No, it's not a gauge theory, but I can add auxiliary field to make it a gauge theory. Like DMU, that is this equation, this is, uh, oh yeah, Stuckelberg yeah. formulation, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So massive, so massive electrodynamics is not a gauge theory, there is no gauge transformation, there are constraints, okay, they are all second class. So that is what, so the cons existence of constraints and existence of gauge transformation as should be separated. Hmm. Hmm? I have one question. So, how do you, uh, given a Lagrangian, how you can, uh, uh, how you can just uh, know that there is a constant that you If the primary constant is 0, uh, if your first moment is, moment is 0, then you can say there is a constant or there is another way to characterize there is some constant in the theory, given a Lagrangian. Given Lagrangian, you, I mean, there are two, uh, let me say, uh, if you make a Lagrangian transform, you will know immediately because you will find that the. For the Lagrangian transformation, you have to calculate the moment of the theory. Right. And that turns out to be zero. Then, then you say that. There is so it is a statement that the DPI or DQJ dot. Okay. This object here is. is this is a Lagrangian transform, right? Yes. Uh, of the of the P. P this is the one which tells you whether I can invert. If I make a Lagrangian transform, I can go back. Okay, but this is equal to d two l d q i dot d q j dot. Right? d q i dot d q j dot. Right? But this is a Hessian matrix. So the the singularity, the existence of kernels in this mapping is the same as this matrix having not zero determinant okay so you can directly look at the hessian in the lagrangian formulation this this is called the hessian hessian matrix and you can tell whether there are um, going to be constraint there are constraints in the model so primary constant has to be zero for any theory any theory why yes. Otherwise, how this if the theory is has a hessian which is singular there will be primary constraints and and vice versa. 
but if you take a free particle there is no nothing no the, the yeah you cannot invert it the tangent space is not from one to the other is not matching properly okay so last time what i did was this time i'll start by searching for a duster yes so let me just quickly remind you what it is so we had a manifold m right this is the what is governing the lagrangian associated to it you have this space of positions and velocities the tangent bundle and the cotangent bundle positions and momenta in the legendre map so any l will produce this map okay and primary constraints means the image of this map pj gives you some constraints m uh, p is weakly zero okay the image of the map is zero okay so the next step was from here you write the hamiltonian where you write the standard equation uh pj say mj dot if you really write mj dot minus l of p and m not p and m m and m dot but you add lagrange multiplies okay and this we saw was a function of let me this thing here is a function only of m and p m and p okay this is not unique you can add and subtract constraints this all these equations are on the surface eventually okay but you should not put this here because when taking poisson brackets you will get wrong answers if you do that okay after you do all all your activity you can set it equal to zero then you look at secondary constraints say pj h and you substitute equal to 0 okay i forgot to say that here may fix some vj or give more constraints because in our spin problem in fact uh, it fixes the v okay it can do both keep going okay so this will be uh, uh, more constraints called sj okay then keep going repeat till we stop still no more new constraints then you have a whole collection of constraints okay so we get a collection of constraints c k prime according to dirac primary versus secondary is less important but what is important is to divide this into first class fj and rest okay call it rest is something sk sl
where this the first class constraints commute with all constraints. This has two consequences, okay. The, uh, the remain so, okay. First statement is the, the matrix function, call it M J K of Q P, which is the Poisson bracket of S J with. S k of q p is non singular okay, and invertible. Okay. Uh, this is important. Okay. Why? If not There exists psi k q p okay. not all zero such that m j k psi k is zero. This is a null vector. Sorry. Is given right there. First class constraint cons commutes all constraints. Yeah, strongly zero, strongly zero, right? No, weakly. Again, what does it mean? Everything is weak eh? on the constraint surface. Oh, oh. You take the Poisson bracket, evaluate it on the constraint surface, you get zero. So it is as a Poisson bracket, it is acting tangentially to the constraint surface. Okay, the canonical transformations it generates. Takes a function on the constraint surface to a function on the constraint surface. But all the constraints are already um, with respect to that. Okay. So you are not, oh, not worried about primary and secondary constraints? No, not anymore. Okay. After you have done it, you collect them and divide them in this way. So suppose the right hand side is a linear combination of CKs. Which one? This bracket FJCK Poisson bracket. Uh. If the right hand side is a linear combination of CK, yeah. Would that be a first class constraint? Yes. In fact, I will show you that the first class constraints. But the Poisson bracket algebra, I mean, the Poisson bracket algebra of constraints closes. Poisson bracket algebra of constraints of the F's will close. In a strong sense, the Poisson bracket of F with F will be an F. So that is what you mean by first class constraints? That is what I will deduce. Okay. Okay. So that is why I am doing this. This implies that S j commutes with psi j, psi k, S k. Because the Poisson bracket is a derivation, that is, this is the same as Poisson bracket with this with this plus this with that. But this with this is multiplied by something which vanishes. Okay. okay. But S J with let's say F uh, F L is anyway zero because this is first class. I'm not following you. Ah, I want to show you that the Poisson bracket of second class constraints is invertible. Okay. It is fiber wise invertible. Okay. So you should find this matrix. Sorry? No, but this is 0 anyway. So this will imply S j okay, is 0 not being first class.
I said because the S will commute with all constraints in here uh, not this one this combination uh, not this one this combination uh, what is it so what, what is it there is a this one okay. okay so this implies sorry uh, but so I should write psi k s k f l for some bracket is weakly 0. This implies this, but this implies it already commutes with all second constraints. Okay. So, I should have said or psi k s k first class, okay, which is not which is contradiction. That is what I should say, okay. namely the existence if this were 0, there will be some combination of the SS which is again first class. So, I should have put it in the original list. Right? So, you start with some SKs which are not first class. So, you have to collect them. So, I then it will imply that this is not, sing, sing, not 0. This is Start the rest SK. So, these SKs you assume first they are not first class. They are not first class. No linear combination of them is first class. If the matrix is positive, sem not some positive semi definite, then there is a null vector exists. Yeah. And if I subtract so the null vector and that this part step then is by definition because that is the definition of first class construct. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Then it has to be first class. Okay. Okay. So, Okay, I will do this first. So, so the, we have therefore concluded that this M J K is invertible. Okay. Now, I will tell you geometrical meaning of what this is. Okay. So, anyway, let me give you an example. Then we can strongly eliminate second uh, second class constraints using what is called Dirac. Bergman brackets. I was not intended to do this, but since the I will not use this in further analysis. What you do is this is changing the Poisson bracket, okay. So the you change the Poisson bracket okay, in the following way. Change P B to okay, direct D B. So, it is say f 1 f 2 star is the original f 1 f 2 okay, minus f 1 the constraint s k m inverse k l s l f 2. Why am I doing this? For this bracket, okay. If you look at the bracket of Fj with anything, with anything at all, it is simply zero. Because, for example, you put F1 as a constraint. It's a constraint, no? So you will find that this will become the matrix of the inverse. So it will cancel. Okay. So, it is simply commuting with everything. So, the direct in this new bracket, the constraints are in the center of the direct bracket algebra. 
Dirac Bergman bracket algebra. Okay. Uh, so what does it start with? The new bracket. It's a Dirac Bergman bracket. Huh? Dirac Bergman bracket. Bergman bracket. You have to check that it fulfills Jacobi anti-symmetry obvious. Uh, but it, uh, you can check it. But I'll show you what it means. Everything and uh, S j equal to zero, you can eliminate it as an algebraic equation. Okay, or S j, okay, or in the center of let's say Dirac Bergman algebra, it commutes with everything. So eliminate it algebraic. So just eliminate it. algebraically. I should show you some examples. What you do is, is some polynomial or something, you just solve it and get rid of the extra variables. Okay. This is not the best way in most cases, but I am telling for completeness that this is a methodology which has been pursued and works in some cases like massive vector meson. Okay. What does it mean? Okay. So, first notice, uh, sir, note. Sir, you are using capital F for the first class density. Yeah, I will come to that. No, no, these are any functions. Any arbitrary functions. Any function on the phase space commutes with this in this new bracket. What does it mean? Okay. So, uh, those, those of you meaning. S n S 2 of course will commute, but this S s will commute with anything in this star bracket, okay. everything whatsoever and we want to work on the surface S j equal to z. These are all classical, quantum you could have all kinds of problems with factor ordering, I would not test them now. Okay. Okay. What is the meaning? Well, remember In all these problems, okay, in all these problems, we have a what we will call a symplectic. form omega which is which I will write this in the notation omega i j d psi i which d psi j okay. this is your d p d q in local coordinates you can always bring it to this form but you have some Huh? It's a two form, and it's closed. Okay, and Poisson bracket. Okay, is given by any two functions, say alpha, beta. Is given by uh, this omega. I am not sure of the indice. Uh, uh, let's see. I'll. I have to be sure of. Yeah, it's okay. Index notation, okay. Okay, um, d alpha or d psi i, d beta or d psi j. Oh, I have to invert this. That's right. That's fine. Where omega i k, omega k i, k j is delta i j. Okay. This is a simplicity form. This is called the Lagrange. This is the Lagrange. Uh, form Lagrange bracket. You might have seen come across Lagrange brackets. Okay. This is associated with the Lagrange bracket. So, uh, 
and this you can think of it as DPDQ fine. So, here the omega ij will be the epsilon tensor anti-symmetric epsilon tensor and you put it here you get the Poisson bracket and uh, the fact that the closure ok d omega equal to 0 implies and is implied by Jacobi for Poisson bracket. There is a little known paper by Pauli who showed this first just Pauli who showed this first ok that this closure of the uh, he was the first one to start discussing this Poisson algebra whereas the symplectic manifolds were already known there were theorems on, uh, on two close two forms and so on Pauli addressed this in quantum classical mechanics. Now what is happening with this surface ok now okay. the surface okay. the number of independent SK is even why because We know that M K L is equal to minus M L K, right? It's anti-symmetric. So determinant of M is equal to minus one to the power of D determinant of M. Okay, D number of S S. So if D is odd, the determinant will vanish, and M will be singular. So, number of SS is even ok. So, if original phase space original say the pos this object had dimensions let us say is twice let me use this notation m is a dimension of the manifold. The dimension of surface okay, with S j equal to zero okay, is two m minus an even number okay, because the number of constraints independent constraints is even. So, this is an even dimensional sub manifold okay, in T star m. So, the surface okay, in T star m okay, with S j being 0 is even dimensional. So, you have this T star m and you have this surface is j equal to 0. This is a constraint surface of second class of the second class. So, you have a form here in the whole T star m you have this simplicity form. Forms can be pulled back if you know what I mean ok. So, you can restrict the forms ok. So, this is my constraint second class surface I need some you know, it is even dimensional. So, I pull it back. Uh, so, uh, usually this surface uh, give me some uh, surface S, S is not a good word. Sigma. Huh? What? Sigma, sigma. This is even dimensional. Okay. So, you can pull back. So, omega. I can pull it back, pull back of omega to sigma 
call it 5 star of sigma using the canonical notation. So, actually what people will say is think of the sigma is sitting outside here and you make a map of phi of sigma in embedding it in this T star m and pull it back and put it there. Sorry? It is not Lagrangian, not Lagrangian. Okay. but it is a symplectic manifold okay. because omega this two the omega will not vanish that is the whole point on a second class surface this pullback form this pullback form is a close to form it is close because the original one was closed but it is non singular okay. then that is then right phi star omega okay, as phi star omega i j d psi i which d psi j okay. and drag d b bracket is just obtained from here that is alpha beta star is alpha beta minus okay, alpha okay, uh, well I should not write like this is obtained by writing inverting this matrix phi star omega i j d alpha or d psi i d beta or d psi j okay, is a pullback form okay. and since D of phi star omega is 0 because a pullback does not change the closure, Jacobi ok is guaranteed. So, is also a manifold. manifold for second class constraints, only second class. Okay. This result I should absolutely mention was proved by Mukunda and George and there was a, some other people who proved it at the same time but definitely these people do these two proved George, George Sudarshan and yeah these two the main problem is in showing that this expression coincides with what Dirac what Dirac and Bergman wrote down Dirac's answer is given in the Yeshiva lectures Bergman independently was working on this. There is a story which Haag told one of my friends. Okay. Haag was asked, somebody discovered that Haag had originally written a paper on constraints. So, they were asked, he was asked why he left it. He said that he was very young and he found that, he heard that uh, Bergman was working on it, and Dirac was working on it. So, he said he was simply not good enough to quit. <laughs> So, there is a, there is a small story, okay. but if you do not know differential form, never mind. Okay. Yeah. How is this reduced to the case when there are no second class constraints? No second class constraints, yeah. then you do not do it. No, but you are pulling back on the surface. That surface will be the whole manifold, you do not do anything. Okay. No, no second class constraint would be no better. No, 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 no. T star m is there already, T star m is there already. And second class constraints gives you a sub manifold there. Yeah, so if there are no second class constraints, there will not be a sub manifold. But you will be just working on full of full T star M. If there are no second class constraints, there is the whole time. Full T star M. Yeah, but when you pull it, it says there is a sub manifold. Whole of, whole of T star M you will be working. But the complement of that is the whole. No, no, not the complement. This is a sub manifold. By the way, you cannot find a complement of a sub manifold. That is not a manifold. Huh? Hmm? Okay. So, this is just a geometrical meaning Sorry. of this mysterious this formula. It is not that is not clear. That was the contribution. I mean, the guess that this is what was happening was done by George and uh, by Mukunda and by somebody else which I am whom I am not remembering. Okay. And they wrote a uh, Mukunda is very, very clear and explicit. So, that paper is very precise and shows this fact. 
you have to go and look at the constraints okay, and invert the matrix and pro use properties of the matrix systematically okay, which they did. SS will not commute. Okay. So the SS. Commute, so you should be able to the system. Yeah, yeah. Because SS are gone. Because you have put, yeah, yeah, put when you pull back here, you, yes, there are no SS. Okay. It's already a simple. It doesn't know anything about SS. See, when you look at this language, the sigma is not supposed to be inside when you do the pullback. It is somewhere there. You have a model manifold sigma. You pull it, put it there, and pull back the whole structure. Okay. So then it doesn't know anything about where it came from. So that is why I put a 5 star that language. Okay. But if you want to think of restrictions, then I cannot use this kind of language. So I change this. Okay. Now, what about first class? Why did I do all this? I will not use this drag backers, but I will use some, uh, some other technique which I think is more adapted here. And I will mention that I suspect that it can be used, as I told you in quantum gravity as well, at least in low dimensions, okay. because of recent uh, work uh, coming from people like uh, this Raphael, Raphael's group and also this Hadamard states and so on. Okay. It seems that low dimension may be, because it, you see that it gives a, a complex structure which we shall see is important for quantizing even particles with spin. So you will be able to divide the constraint into, you will be able to apply a, maybe a Gupta Bloiler type procedure. I will try to show you. Now, why did I do all this? Okay. Back to first class. So, the claim is the Poisson bracket of F i with F j is C k i j. This could be a function of q and m F k. I put this could be functions. This is a claim. So I am going to claim, I will prove it to you. This is claim. So you are assuming that you have solved explicitly the second class constraint. Yeah, say, no, 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 I will prove this. With the second class constraints, with the Dirac bracket, then. with no, without the Dirac bracket, I'll show it to you. Oh, okay. So I didn't put any star in the bracket. Okay, okay. this is true. I want to warn you. All this is very nice and uh, nice is looks simple, but it is not because there is no guarantee in a complicated problem that this M. This is not a constant matrix. It depends on the point of the phase, point of the uh, T star M. Could have different ranks at different places, no problem. Okay. If that happens, this whole method will be in trouble, right? I mean, it happens in certain physical context. So, if you have different ranks, for example, it might have zeros, it is determinant might have zeros. Okay. Then, at those points, the rank of m suddenly changes, right? So, you have to cut those points out to do this analysis. So the moment you put cut those points out in size, then when you go into quantum theory you will immediately have manifolds with boundaries and you will get have the, all this uh, uh, what is it silver joint operators and all kinds of um, uh, uh, stuff which people definitely loathe <laughs> you will have to do all this phenomenon analysis all kinds of things okay so uh, this happens in some bonds okay it happens for example in gravity there are you know second class constraints it happens similar thing happens with this coefficients when you do fact trying to do factor ordering, I mean if you cannot write it like this in quantum theory because these things do not commute. Okay. So you have to do some ordering. So they may not even close. But if you succeed in closing, these coefficients generally come out as functions on where you are. Then uh, you do not know what happens. Okay. So this is all uh, this is a very uh, cosmetic way of presenting the material. Okay. Beyond this, you cannot make general statements, okay, which is one of the problems of this whole business. But in the cases we consider it, this, we would not encounter this. Okay.
How do I prove this? For suppose okay, F j F i F j right. I wrote M, M and P. The point of the manifold in the phase space. Huh? Okay. This Poisson bracket had C K I J okay, F K, but suppose there were D K I J. S k. I huh? will prove that d is 0. Why? Because some question. This is an identity, it is not weakly 0 yet, not, not, weak, not weakly 0. Weakly 0, the whole thing is weakly 0. Yeah. There is nothing to prove. Okay. How do I prove this? Well, use Jacobi. By the way, Dirac bracket is not weak. For se as far as second class constraints are concerned, the Dirac bracket is a strong equation. Okay. So, I am careful in putting tiddles and equalities. Okay. So, what is Jacobi? Is something like F i F j let us say S k, okay. Huh? Yeah, plus F j S k F i plus uh, S k F i F j is Jacobi, so certainly it has to vanish. In fact, as you strongly vanish, certainly it has to vanish weakly yeah, on the surface. Does not matter? This thing here, let us put weakly, it will vanish. Let us put weakly. This thing here, this is a constraint. This is a constraint, is a CK, a CL. This is a CL. Because this is a Poisson bracket of a first class constraint with a constraint. So, it is a constraint put here, but that has 0 Poisson bracket with the first class constraint. So, this whole thing is weakly 0. Same thing goes here, but here you get S k, then you get uh, this d i is weakly d i j okay, m times S m. Right? But this is equal, this is not weakly 0, this is weakly equal to d m i j times this bracket S k with S m, what I called m k m. And this is supposed to be weakly 0. Uh, you say m is invertible, so, okay. d m i j is 0. Hmm. So, the first class constraints look like they look like forming a Lie uh, Lie algebra, closing under commutations. Classically, this it it will have it will vanish, okay. that is not the problem. The problem will come when the the c is a function of q and p as happens in gravity. Okay. The structure constants are not really that of a Lie algebra, something else is happening. Okay. The Lie algebra is not on complex numbers if you want to put it that way, but the coefficients are in some functions. Okay. You can define a Lie algebra where the multiple the scalars are taken from anything. Okay. You can take it from complex numbers, real numbers. Uh, what is it? Uh, feels a characteristic p, where p is 
suppose you take them from functions, you get this, then you, nobody knows what is happening. This is what happens in gravity. Always we define Lie algebra over a field of integers. No, no. No, no. No, no. Semi simple Lie algebra is over finite, is over, they do all of it. We do it with reals, for example, so ah, okay. real Lie algebra is compact Lie groups or over real Lie algebra. Yes, yeah. We do it over complex. Then down the corridor there are people or a second floor there are people who do it on fields of prime character, fi finite fields. Okay. Uh, uh, periodic I have not seen, but I have not seen. But I have certainly seen lot of people doing uh, prime character Zp for P prime. Okay. Zp to for P prime okay, is a that is a canonical thing that people do. Okay. You can do that SL2 with coefficients in Z. Z p S L 2 with coefficients in integers that kind of thing no. Finite fields they do all the time not only they we also in physics also it turns out yeah <laughs> nowadays nothing to us right <laughs> yes but uh, this stuff is a different story I have not seen anything much here on this but anyway so, so let me understand this here. So, what Dirac suggests? To quantize. Okay. So, we assume The, there are no second class constraints or they have been somehow handled maybe with Dirac brackets, Dirac Bergman brackets. Okay. So, promote F j to operators F hat j and constrain okay, vectors. Uh, in Hilbert space by F hat G acting on the state is 0. Gutta huh? Bloiler, that is what Dirac suggests. Yes, the whole point is this is consistent since okay, this f hat j f hat k is c j k l f hat l. Okay. We cannot do this with second class. Because their Poisson bracket is non singular, okay. so you will get a contradiction. Since okay, this equation will give okay, Sj. S hat j, S hat j, S hat k equal to 0 equal to this matrix M j k equal to 0. So, you will get some nonsense equation. Okay. So, second class constraints cannot be treated this way, but first class can. Okay. 
Now, if say O is an observable, we we want O acting on this if j is 0 if f hat j let me call it O hat f hat j on this state is 0. Huh? So, we would like which means O, o hat with f hat j is weakly 0 or is a linear combination of constraints is some uh, psi j k this could be depending on O times f hat k but consistency or O hat commutes with f hat I mean modulo constraints. So, O hat, so this leads to the interpretation that F hat J generate gauge transformer infinitesimal. gauge transformations yes now let me make two remarks on this context yeah? first claim is okay. so classically so There are two things that happen. The surface sigma, okay. So, if let us say sigma some, uh, I, sh I should not write sigma, if uh, the surface with f j equal to 0 okay, is let me call it uh, give me another symbol huh? what what gamma. <laughs> is gamma capital, capital gamma of course no none of us I mean we would not even imagine putting small gamma. <laughs> is gamma okay. the canonical transformation okay, the generated by f j is tangent to gamma hmm. the vector fields each f j generates a vector field okay, and the vector field is tangent to gamma why because the f with f with is in a again f. So, gamma is here this vector phase associated gamma is tangent to the surface. The second class constraints on the contrary will take uh, are is transversal to the surface. So, this is the major difference between first and second class. So, you have got this 
surface okay, f is acting the vector field is generated by f that is what I mean by the canonical transformations is tangent the second class is going that way. The canonical trans each fg generates a vector field that is differential operator with coefficients okay. and uh, with that we can associate on the manifold vectors okay, going along the manifold okay. and they are tangent to the surface because f with f is again in f whereas the second class ones are transversal because uh, those vector fields do not close on the surface. Okay. The transversal to the surface, okay. but in addition, okay, okay, observables O, o are constant on orbits. generated by f's yes because that is what I said here okay. so we are reducing the degrees of freedom by 2 2 f's so the if so if there are k first class constraints okay. we are reducing okay. the, fa uh, the family of functions if you want okay. family of functions by 2 k I am re, uh, first f vanish but then f are generating canonical transformations so there f f this is the surface where f vanishes but if we take a point here f generate canonical transformations so they move you along this it is like a sphere I take a, some uh, say in suppose I take a sphere r square minus 1. So, f is r square minus 1 this is vanishing, but this might have non trivial Poisson brackets with a function on this. So, it will generate a vector field tangent to the surface, right. So, the function may vanish, but the Poisson bracket it generates is not vanishing, but it is remaining tangent to the surface, otherwise, I would not have this term. So, it is going tangent, so it is drawing lines on the surface if you take the vector fields and the functions I am considering are constant on this okay. So, first I have reduced the, the family of functions by setting k of them 0, but then I am uh, setting requiring that on the orbits the functions are not changing. So, the, the functions I am dealing with are really the quotient of the surface by the orbits generated by f. So, it is a bundle structure right. So, what I have done is all of them okay. So, this is what I call gamma, but I am quotient in this. So, this is become something uh, uh, in fact I can go I called it E okay. Uh, this is a bundle space uh, what is it? B base space I called uh, E B. So, this goes to B. So, this if I call E okay, this is my bundle space the structure group is a group generated by the F's I am taking quotient and going to B and the observables are functions on B. If you want complete analysis of the geometrical structure I should eventually I am only considering functions on B. Yeah, if you do this, okay. this way is looks beautiful, but unfortunately, 
people who dare to do quantum gravity do not find it very beautiful because it gets a mess. Okay, we will hear a seminar on that from uh, Alok this uh, Wednesday too. Okay. But this is a general schemata. So, I have reduced the thing by 2, 2k twice which is very reasonable because the phase space should be eventual phase space should be even dimensional. Okay. Okay. So, the, uh, the at each point the base of function is still today still even okay. which is by counting. Okay. So, this is a general structure uh, I think I should stop here, but I want next to concretely apply it to particles with spin okay, and show you how all these things systematically come up. One more thing then I will stop that is very important indeed okay, jo uh, physically. In H is H0 plus Vj, you remember this Pj, this must Vj Pj is necessarily first class. This is already known because we put a second class then I take the bracket of second class with this I can determine this. Okay. What I get some equation which can be inverted. Okay. So, this will not come. Okay. So, so, this is necessarily first class and the V's are arbitrary functions. So, objects observables with well defined time evolution necessarily must commute to these constraints because otherwise you will get arbitrary time dependence. Okay. Observables okay. Um, functions with well defined time evolution necessarily okay, have this equation okay uh, functions f let me call it o so o with this vj pj this is a classical must necessarily be zero a well defined cauchy problem can be put only for this o okay which means but this is a condition of gauge invariance but almost okay this is so this is that is o okay is invariant due to gauge transformations this is a classical of this object what get you get here They will not appear or eventual combination yeah, here. Then mm. what happens to this equation? O comma V J S J. Second, they are that is why second class constraints therefore are not observable. That you run to this logic again that yeah. why Vj Pj is necessarily possible. Because if if there were a second class term here, suppose I had a term like S, some S M plus some call, then I will look at the time evolution of S L with H okay. this will commute with the first class part, but here it will give some S L with H 0 and here it will give this matrix M L M and I will invert it and I will find I will find these coefficients. Okay. So, it may get completely determined okay. then uh, uh, it will become something which you know already okay. and you can determine the coefficients and uh, yeah. So, it is not really a no the time evolution I mean eventually the only thing that can remain here undetermined with undi uh, oh, I, I with undetermined is a necessary with undetermined Vj I should say here. So, I cannot treat that coefficient as 
with where is with undetermined vj i forgot to put there may be terms which are second class with determined vj yeah. but that uh, won't uh, okay. undetermined vj Yeah, so it, so it should not be determined by the evolution. Yeah, but there is no kinetic part uh, corresponding to this VJ also. There is no kinetic part. Means, means this time equation is there, this is not constant itself. No, no, you can choose anything whatsoever for these VJs until you look for constraints and the secondary constraints and so on, and some of the VJs will get determined. Okay. Those things are not, uh, they will get multiplied by some second class constraints. Some constraints, second class constraints, okay, or whatever. Okay. Then some of the VJs will not be determined. Okay. The ones which are determined, if it is second class, if I go to direct brackets, you can set them 0. Okay. So, all the things which where the coefficients are fixed will not play any role because by the time they are fixed, so I can, uh, uh, if they are first class with coefficients, they will get um, fixed. So, you can say it will give only well defined uh, well defined time evolution, but these objects which have undetermined coefficients will give undetermined time evolution. So, you cannot tell past future from present they are around ok. okay? So, this is the uh, detection that gauge invariance is necessary for uh, putting Cauchy problem which you were asking today earlier. Okay. Now, a conjecture of Dirac in his Yeshiva lectures is that all first class constraints will appear as Lagrange multipliers in the Hamiltonian. Okay. He could not prove it that in his analysis only the primary constraints will appear okay, here, but A0 also has some other terms okay, like A0. some you have to rearrange the whole thing eventually and you will find something else, some secondary constraint will appear and converting some part here into a constraint and all kinds of things. Okay. And there was a conjecture by Dirac that all primary, all constraints will appear, sorry, all first class constraints will appear in the ha final Hamiltonian with undetermined Lagrange multipliers. Okay. That conjecture is not proved even now to my knowledge. And uh, from this point onwards, you can do other things like BRST. I will not do BRST, but you can put uh, some further activities here, which I will not do. But what I will do is concretely show how it applies to spin okay, and how these things are treated to magnetic monopoles. Then I will shift to problems related to gravity. Okay. So, next Monday, I will not be here. So, somebody has to take the response. You will not be here for sure. For sure. Okay. Okay. Next Monday. Okay. Next Monday also. Next Monday you will not be here. You will not be here. So can you? Yeah. You have to send a e two yeah. emails. It's very really tough. Next Monday. No, no. Next one. Next one. Yeah, yeah. Fix a room also. Next okay. Monday means next Monday. No, you just look at the IMSC seminar list and find which room is empty. Yeah. So there is finite number of rooms. So and send an email also to these people.